All right, so we're going to take a look at taking our EXR file and bringing it into After Effects and setting it up. So I made a very large EXR file. A lot of files we're really not going to use, but just to show to you. And in After Effects, I've already imported it and set it up. So here it is for us. So again, the top layer is your beauty pass. If I double click on this, I've set up two windows. Let me squish this over. Um, this is our beauty pass. And then this is my final composite. And again, I, I didn't go in and do any color adjustment, so there is a little difference between the two. But you just want to set up these layers so it looks like your beauty pass before you go and do any color correction. Um, and again, I have like a clear coat and a subsurface that isn't being used. A lot of them I push down to the bottom of the stack that we're not using. But I just want us to take a look at them. So that's one already done, and we're just going to set up a new project. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to delete this window just so we can look at how to set up that window. And we're going to go and import that file that I made. So again, with the last videos, I showed how to export the EXR file. In 2020, for After Effects and above, uh, they put a filter on to the files for you. So before that, you have to set this up manually, so it takes a long time. And I'll just show you what that file is, but you'll have to um, manually do it if you're on 2019 or below. So I'm going to import file, and I've already navigated to the folder where I have the file I made. I'm going to click on this, and we can click open EXR sequence. And I wouldn't force alphabetical order. It puts it in, in a good order for you. Um, and then we're just going to import this. We want a composition. And I can pre-compose this layer if I, if I want. But I don't want the pre-compose. I do want the contact sheet. And we'll take a look at what the contact sheet is. And we do want the open EXR sequence. And we're going to click OK. And now what it's done is it's set it up for us. So it's already made the composition with all of our layers. So we'll take a look at the contact sheet first. Here is the contact sheet. Takes a minute for it to load. And this is all of our layers visible. So again, I said I put some layers in, um, like the transparency, excuse me, transmission, emission, and I will use some of the clear coat, but we, we haven't set up a clear coat, but there is info on there that we can use. And what we're doing is we're re rebuilding the beauty pass and then having the ability to make different adjustments to our layers so I can put on um, levels or color adjustments. And in that way, we don't have to keep making subtle adjustments in the 3D software. We can fix things in post. So we have to go and set this up in the other comp. So here is the comp that it's giving me where it's taken all of these layers and laid them out for me. In the beauty pass, which I'm just going to double click and open that up, um, if you don't have this separate window, let me double click. Uh, see, I'm getting it because I set it up for it. When you double click, you will, and let me take this out. So now it's in the same. When you double click, you just go to this tab, and here's your comp. So if you want to see them side by side, just grab the layer, and then you'll see you can place it above, below, and I just put it on the side here. And now I can compare, and I'll hide the beauty pass, I can compare these layers. So we're seeing our transmission where there's nothing. We're coming down and we're just cutting off things that we don't need. Um, so again, subsurface scatter. I get a little bit of a rim here for that. And then our subsurface RGBA is the one that I may want to use. So I'm getting just a little bit of that line with the colors. I don't think I want to use any of these, so I'm just going to grab them drag them down. If I feel I need that little seam later, 
I could put them in. I'm just going to drag them all the way to the bottom of the stack. And because I'm going to have my um, you know, bottom layers set for normal, then we don't have to worry about seeing through that. So my diffuse is going to be set to normal. And then we have our clear coats down here, which again I don't have a clear coat built in, built in but some of this reflectivity I may want to use. So we have that one, I'm just soloing these layers in this one. This is probably the one I'll use. So we're just going to start building this and what you do is you just turn off the visibility of the layers that you don't want to see. Um, I'm just going to go down to the diffuse layer and it's right here so if I hit anything else visible I can just solo and that's going to be my normal and then as I move up you'll see we're just seeing that layer as it's normal and you change the blend mode so for most of these it's screen but in some cases screen makes it too light and you might pick multiply um, but again sometimes you'll use add or a different layer to get your your uh, adjustments correct. So I'm going to put multiply. We're going to come in and just as we work up you can start hiding and then revealing your layer and seeing if the mode is working. So does this work better in multiply to get closer to my image or do I need a different mode? So as we go through these we have to keep making adjustments to them if we didn't pick the correct one. And I'm just going to go and turn on screen for most of these. Just so we can quickly line it up. I did set up the oops. I did set up the other one. But you'll see as you go and you change the mode, the look is different for each layer. So we have the addition of that. This is what it looks like with the indirect RGBA um, and this without. So we're just adding all these contributions. And again, if you try different modes, you'll see the result of that. So instead of screen, there might be a case where I have to lighten it and then lower the opacity of the object. But just to set it up very quickly, the majority of these are going to get screen. Now this one is our RGBA shader. And this I can use as a mask. So I'm not using this. And I'm just going to pull it down. So below albedo, which I will move up. Um, I'm not going to, I did not get it. Shadow map we don't need. So we're going to go into our specular. And we'll do the same thing, just screen. This one is really light so when I do screen we're not getting oh, excuse me not this one this one when I do screen we're not getting the result we want so this is definitely a multiply so we want to use the darkness of that channel and again we're adding all these layers so our specular and then our indirect specular with the contributions we're going to add so we're just take those and bring them to screen and again you'll play with it I'm just trying to set up and then look at them So that's our contribution um, we don't have a subsurface scatter again if I felt I needed that if I'm looking at the two and there's a little glow but we don't have that so I'm moving it down And now we're pretty close. This is not dark enough with our reflection. But I do have down here my clear coat. Let's look at the next. So we'll bring up these clear coats. And I'm going to 
gonna set those to screen. I got one I didn't want. Let's see. That's the one. The albedo. So I need this to be a little bit brighter. Um, you know, I can go in and add a levels or a color adjustment, like a hue and saturation. Okay, so this is the basic setup for just getting your render passes together.